So when we talk about visual design in Adobe Captivate or trying to make Adobe Captivate not look like all the other Adobe Captivate projects that are out there, what I like to start with is, is the inspiration. And for me, the inspiration is I like to look at the most successful brands that are out there, like a Microsoft.com. So here's their current website at the time of this recording. And if I scroll down, one of the things you often see on modern websites is this concept of cards to represent navigation within their website. So clicking on the buttons, whether it's shop now, shop now, shop Xbox, learn more, it could be anything. And you can obviously change that. These cards represent the different topics or services or products that this particular brand is using. And obviously following those links would take you where you can learn more about each of those things. Same thing with Google. The Google main page, obviously the search engine is purposefully kept very clean. But if you visit the actual company website, you'll see they also use a card design as well. I particularly like their card design. You know, and I often try to replicate it when possible when I'm building something in Adobe Captivate. So some really neat stuff there. And it's very clean, you'll notice. If your brand allows for it, a very clean background, a very almost white background, maybe a very light gray background can be used as well. Also, Apple, another good example. A lot of animation and a lot of visuals and not very much text when you look at Apple's website. They too have sort of this card design. It's a little bit different than some of the other websites, mostly focusing on images. Text is almost secondary. Like if you're looking for information about Apple Watch, even if you can, couldn't read, you could tell this is the card you're looking for. It doesn't always have to be white. You know, like there's a lot of white websites there. NVIDIA is famous for the color black and this green color. So when you visit their website, they also have cards for navigation purposes. And again, a good inspiration. If your branding is a darker branding than, than maybe some of the others out there, this could be a good example of how you'd want to take advantage of those cards. So beyond the actual famous brands that, you know, you can take inspiration from, there are some really good tools on the web. The one that first comes to mind when I think about things like color is color.adobe.com. It includes this tool that allows you to select the type of color harmony you're looking for whether you're looking for colors that are an analog to one another or complementary colors or various different, again, they call them color harmonies here, but you can manipulate the controls on this page to come up with, you know, a color design, which will then provide you all your hex codes along the bottom. You can even save this as a My Color theme, which would then be accessible in your Creative Cloud library. Another tool that might be quite useful for you is the WCAG standards. These are the accessibility standards for websites. It not only applies to websites, but it also applies to e-learning as well. I would look for the W3C and understanding accessibility also is good design as well, because of course, things like color contrast are covered here. You would look at that in, in the different sections within the WCAG standard. But quickly, I can tell you that if you choose a contrast of 1 to 4.5, in other words, your text, for example, could be 4.5 in relation to the background, which is only one one four four point five of that uh, is probably the easiest way I can say that. But basically, what we're saying is that accessibility means including persons with all abilities and making sure that they can read the text that might be on a light background or darker background. You want to make sure the text is sufficiently one or the other to contrast that background as well. So let's switch back to our authoring tool of choice, in this case, Adobe Captivate. And while, you know, in the past, I may have felt differently about quick start projects, but there's some really good examples there that you can draw from. 
So rather than trying to figure out all this stuff yourself, I'm going to point you to a particular quick start project where I think it captures elements of, of all these design principles that you can incorporate in your e-learning project. So let's take a look at the quick start projects and I'm specifically looking for the one on personal development. And actually this introductory slide is a really good example of some of the things that I want to illustrate to you. So the first thing would be the choice of fonts, right? So there's a great documentary out there called Helvetica. And if you have an opportunity to see that, it's sort of the history of that font and actually the history of many fonts that have been used throughout the graphic arts industry. The neat thing about your font choice is that your font choice can convey the message behind the words that are on the screen here. Helvetica was originally designed as a font that conveyed nothing. It's so generic. And, and if you watch this documentary, if you get a chance to see it, if I can find a link to it, I'll put it in the description of this video. But if you can find this, this documentary, one of the things that's really shocking is how prevalent, how prevalent Helvetica is in our society. You know, whether you're looking at McDonald's or, you know, various other huge Microsoft as an example of a variant on the Helvetica font. There's, it's everywhere and used so often that we just kind of ignore it. Some people hate it, some people love it, but either way, choosing a font is going to really convey part of your brand. The thing you'll typically get from an organization that you work for is a brand guidelines document. I would look closely at that. That will give you insight into the colors that you choose, the fonts that you choose, even the images that you find from stock photography sites. It will guide you as to what sort of images you should be looking for. This particular slide, if I click on the slide itself over in my slide sorter here and click on the visual properties, you can see that there is a spot where the background of this slide is set up. You've got an actual background here. At first glance, you might not notice it, but there's sort of a subtle speckled effect, almost like this slide has been printed on paper. If you edit the image, you can see it maybe a little bit more clearly. And you can also see you know, how it looks on different size screens as well, which can be helpful. It's not limited to just this one design. Different slides actually have different backgrounds as well. This one has sort of a spatter effect in the upper left, another spatter in the bottom right, but also with this organic plant-like icon as well, just to give it a certain style. And you can go through all these slides and see examples of that. Incidentally, anything you find in this project is yours to use however you see fit. That's one of the great things about the asset library in Adobe Captivate. You don't require special permission to use any of these images or these objects as well. Back to the original one here, let's talk a little bit about this graphic. What's neat is that this does not look like any other slide in any other quick start project because it has this unique image that has a transparent background. This was produced by bringing in a PNG file with this torn sort of almost watercolor edge to this image. And that was all done in Photoshop, presumably, or whatever photo editing tool that you have access to. Save it as a PNG, and then that background image kind of shows through. And even though this image is actually a rectangle, from the user's perspective, it looks like this blob of a combination of images and paintbrush effects and so on, making it far more interesting than just a square or rectangular image. The other element I wanna draw your attention to is this button. And this is particularly important because if we zoom right in close, you can see it's not just a square or rounded rectangle button. This has this sort of paintbrush effect. And you can use this, you could simply replace the background, which typically is a solid color inside of your image. 
inside of your button, you can replace that with an image instead. And that's what the designer has done. Keep in mind that buttons, of course, have different states and you might want to make multiple versions of this, maybe increase or decrease the contrast or the brightness of the image for the different states. In this case here, for example, if we have a disabled state, it's similar to the green, except it's been shown as black and white to suggest that it has not been enabled yet. But this is a, a really neat effect because we're not just sticking to some standard looking element here. This looks totally different, again, from any other project that you might have in Adobe Captivate. You know, here's an example where we've got these, uh, again, something similar to the images on slide number one. We've got sort of a table of contents here that's very visual rather than using just a text-based table of contents. This person has in, included an image grid with the titles of each of the four sections. And then you can follow the links to those, which are actually the images with the, the items here. And when they've gone visited, we change that color to grayscale. So if you've visited a site, you know you visited it because we've changed the appearance of it when they return to this slide. If you're building that sort of interaction, of course, make sure to include if you want to include that as well, remember that anything you click, you can also add animation effects to as well. And that's something that can add an element of interest. Right now, there are no transitions here, but you could choose what the slide transition in this case would be by clicking this button. Maybe it pushes the slide up or flips it up or slides it to the left, whatever it might be. Or if you were clicking this button and showing something on the slide, you can add a visual effect to that object that's being shown as well. So again, just to kind of summarize here, we've, you know, font choice is really important. Effects are really important. And when you want to have something appear on the slide, just having it appear might not be enough, but maybe a subtle zoomed in fade effect, like a fade forward is the effect I'm thinking of, really makes things look nice. So your font choice, the background of the slide doesn't have to be plain white or plain back. Use an image, but don't clutter your slide. It has to be a subtle image like this um, coarse paper effect here. Images, again, don't have to be square or rectangle. Do a little Photoshop work and give them an effect like this uh, torn watercolor effect here. And also your buttons can be something other than a solid color. They could be gradients or they could, of course, be an effect like this uh, brush stroke effect that's here.